Are you ready? Hey, I'm Clint Garrett, Ace Networker. What is a multi-layer switch? We've heard about and used plenty of layer two switches in computer networks all over the world. But now we're starting to hear the term multi-layer switch. And this may be somewhat confusing when you first hear the term. So let's first look once more at what a layer two switch does and its functions. We'll revamp the big points about all the other switch videos in this series. Then we'll look at a layer three and layer four switch and how they each differ. Coming up. So what is a multi-layer switch? We know that a layer two switch performs fast switch functions of forwarding and separating traffic based on its configuration settings. Again, those given to it by you as the admin, technician, or engineer. And it forwards that traffic using ASICs, application-specific integrated circuits, which are hardware integrated chip circuits that are really efficient at forwarding and doing the job a switch needs to do on a network. When we hear the term layer in front of a number on a switch, 99% of the time, in fact, most of the time, it's referring to the layer in the OSI model that it handles and deals with. If you haven't watched it yet, I recommend this video showing what the OSI model is and why it needs to be studied and known. So a layer two switch deals with the data link layer of the OSI model, layer two. And it forwards traffic, again, using the ASIC hardware, it forwards traffic based on destination and source MAC addresses in each frame received from the rest of the network. Now, different technology building companies that build network hardware and software components have begun developing multi-layer switches for use. This leads us to the layer three switch. Now, a layer three switch still uses fast switching with ASICs, but it can also perform similar routing functions to an actual router. This is important because on many layer three switches in networks and environments where they can be used, they can perform a layer three routing function or functions much faster than an actual router because a router uses software to route traffic. The biggest differences between a layer three switch and a router is that a layer three switch uses hardware to forward or route traffic, those ASIC chips, and a router uses software. A layer three switch can often contain more physical ports for connectivity of cables and or devices than a router can, and a layer three switch in most cases is unable to route between different types of cables, whereas an actual router can more often route between different types of cables or connections. On a layer two or layer three switch, you typically have to have all or most connections to it run using ethernet. But a router can actually route and connect between ethernet and other types of technologies and protocols. So those are the primary differences between layer two, layer three switches, and routers. But layer three switches aren't the only multi-layer switches on the market now. There are layer four switches, which can actually load balance by sending traffic to one or many servers that perform the same function for replication. And there's now actually an, a layer seven switch that can read and route traffic based on layer seven or the application layer traffic, things like FTP, HTTP, etc. Also, you'll see more of these on the market, but there's a layer four through seven switch that can, or, or sometimes they just call it a four seven switch, that can load balance between multiple servers and look at application layer data also. So some or all of these may be required for you to know on the Network Plus exam, but it's really a good idea to know them anyway, because as technology advances, you'll see more and more of these multi-layer switches being used in more and more networks around the planet. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready?